Hello and welcome. Today's guest went from rock and roll star to massage therapy instructor rock star. <laughs> Talk about the road less traveled. Hi and welcome. I'm Melanie Hayden of the Healing Cocoon and Massage Therapy Radio and I will be your host for this interview with my very special guest and my friend Eric Dalton. Welcome Eric. Hi. It's really great to have you here and I'm really excited to be able to spend this time with you. Yeah, it's great, Melanie. Old friends. We met in what, 1998 or something? Yeah, I don't. I, think I was. was I think it was. Yep, FSMTA conference, I believe. Yes. The, the pod. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> Remember right. That? We just, the we pod. just come back from uh, the Bahamas on the yeah. um, Upledger Institute's Dolphin Therapy um, uh, kind of week long session there. So yeah. That was great. Awesome. So, how are you? I'm good, really good, considering everything. <laughs> Hot as heck here in Oklahoma. It was a, a, nearing 100 degrees uh, yesterday, so we're hot. Wow, that's pretty typical summer, hey? Yeah, that's about right. Awesome. Like um, so I want to start with this whole rock and roll history piece, because I love hearing stories of where people came from and where, you know, sort of their massage, what was their massage like? massage life like before massage and how did you come into the the uh, massage profession yeah you know um played the college band our college band actually got a record contract so we moved out to california and and uh and you know i thought it would last for a short time and enroll in classes and we're taking classes and just uh, the the um the music business i ended up staying in it almost 17 years and, you know, as a drummer, my mother used to say, Eric ain't happy if his hands aren't busy. Or, <laughs> I think she said, Eric isn't happy if his hands aren't busy. So, you know, I've always uh, been, uh, been into music as a tap dancer leading into that. And that's what got me into it. My mother was an Arthur Murray uh, tap teacher. And, uh, but I've always loved drums. And, uh, you know, I still play every day. I got a band in Costa Rica that I'm missing a lot because I haven't been able to get into Costa Rica, it's closed down, the country is closed down. So, you know, um, I, I, I was, got really interested in nutrition. I'd, I'd taken a, a, a summer class at uh, UCLA in uh, nutrition, and I expected it to be the typical kind of nutrition courses that you get that are kind of uh, the pyramid thing, but it was very, very advanced. And so I got interested in that, and I went to work uh, out of the rock and roll business in uh, uh, into the Health Institute San Diego, where I taught nutrition and biofeedback. And then, um, so at, at that time, I was having a whole bunch of trouble with my, uh, with my left scapula under here and the rib, that uh, thing that everybody gets on one side. And it was from sitting in the studio, hitting that two and four on the snare drum. And I'd been to all kinds of people in LA, chiropractors, physical therapists, all sorts of uh, body workers, and, and I hadn't had any success. And so um, I was working at the Health Institute of San Diego and then the kitchen. And uh, one of the people were talking about this, Rolfer in Del Mar. So anyway, long story short, I went over to him and he fixed it and it got me interested in, uh, in body work. And I never thought that was gonna be anything that I would be interested in touching bodies except for my girlfriend wasn't really that interesting to me but he talked me into taking a basic uh, massage class out there in San Diego Mueller College of Massage and I mean it was before the first semester was over I was totally hooked I mean I just absolutely loved it particularly um, the anatomy part and the kinesiology part and all that stuff so you know, then, uh, you know, made them enough money in the rock and roll business uh, to uh, put me through the Roth Institute, uh, uh, the Roth Institute, and then um, everything went from there. Wow, that, that's such a cool story, and I love how you went through the nutrition piece first. Yeah, I still that. That. That's, that's still kind of really more my passion than almost anything right now. I, at night, I typically read uh, gut books, microbiome, microbiome books. I'm fascinated by gut bacteria and all that stuff. So I, uh, that's, that's really kind of my passion more than, uh, than body work, yeah. drumming and, uh, and, and, and my gut. <laughs> well, there's so much more information out there now too, right? I didn't oh, know about God. your, uh, the nutrition background piece. So yeah, yeah. 
that makes a lot of sense. So you, you took the nutrition courses and then you started teaching. So with massage and rolfing, when did you start teaching that? Um, let's see. Okay, so I, I fractured my neck in 1989 in a judo fall and I got real interested in, in, in bones, joints, trying to figure out. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't learn anything in the Rolf Institute or any of the workshops that I was uh, taking about joints. And so I uh, had the opportunity to go take postgraduate workshops at um, Michigan State College of Osteopathic Medicine. And it was the place to be with Dr. Philip Greenman, the late, great Dr. Philip Greenman. And so uh, I just kept trying to learn this stuff. It was way over my head. You know, I didn't have a background on all these uh, osteopaths had, obviously. So I was kind of very quiet and sat in the back a lot. And, uh, but I ended up going nine years postgraduate workshops with him. Then he passed away. But, um, but, you know, I finally got to a point where I, I said, you know what, if I don't teach this, I'm never going to learn it because it's, I, I just cannot, I'm not able to apply it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not applying this in my practice much. And so you know, we had a little workshop, me and Kim Miller, my wife, we had a, 10 people and we were thrilled that 10 people showed up in uh, 1994. And then our, my big pink garage, three car garage, and it was thrilling and I was so damn nervous. And, uh, and I, you know, and so it just kind of went from there. I started up uh, integrating the osteopathic stuff with the deep tissue work and and uh, decided that uh, I would, um, you know, do some videos. And so I did some videos and wrote a book and released it in 1998. And then from then on, you know, it was workshop after workshop after workshop. Wow. So now, like, so you went from 10 people in your garage. I love this story because it, I think it allows people to think like, oh, you know, I could try this too. And I also really appreciate that you really figured out that to get the knowledge, to understand the knowledge, to integrate it, to start using it, to start applying it, was to get out there and teach it. Yeah. Well, share it with other people. Yeah, people talk about that all the time. Instructors talk about that all the time. And really, I'm, teaching is, is not one of my thrills. Teaching does really not do much for me. I mean, I enjoy being in there. Once it starts, it's great being with all the people and all that stuff. And I learn a lot. That's one of the reasons. One of the big reasons I, I like teaching is just uh, the uh, to pick up stuff from the students, steal it, and then call it my own when they're not around. <laughs> That's what we all do, really. We do pick up a lot of stuff, you know. But, yeah, you know, it's um, – and even though teaching isn't my love, learning is my love. That was when I was, I was at my height is uh, during all those years, starting way back when I graduated from a massage school in, in, in uh, what year was it, 79. And uh, so I'm celebrating my 40th year in the business uh, last year. Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, I like to teach, but I don't love to teach. Right. Well, I know people love to take your classes because your classes fill up. They're fine. They really do. And yeah. along those lines, Eric, um, one of the things that I really appreciate about you and a lot of the other um, instructors that I know and have known through the years, like James Wazlowski and Till Luca and, you know, Eric Stevenson, Eric Brown, you guys all love learning. Like right. you uh -huh. love learning. You take each other's classes you um, are teacher assistants in each other's classes. And now just that piece of talking about learning from your students. So this I think is one of the greatest things that we as practitioners can, can do is launch into this lifelong learning piece. Right. So, you know, how do you keep your, um, you know, your, learn, your thirst for knowledge alive and, and where do you keep going for, for more knowledge? Well, back to, uh, your, to your point, uh, we, we started doing these Costa Rica workshops way back in 2002, and, uh, and I was really missing learning from other people because I didn't have time to take workshops from other people, and that's what I really love to do. I really love to learn. And uh, so what I started doing is inviting special guests to Costa Rica to co-teach with me for that week. So I think in the beginning, I had James Wozlowski for uh, two years, 
I think I had uh, Aaron Mattis and then uh, David Kent and then um, Tom, uh, Tom Myers and then Wozlowski again. And then it just got to be a, to a point where, you know, we had so many people wanting to come and well, I just started doing it myself again. But I do miss that. So now I invite them to the Oklahoma City thing. We're having our eighth annual Oklahoma City event, usually on the 4th of July. But uh, we had to cancel it, not cancel it. We postponed it till next 4th of July. And uh, it's an incredible event. We got 170 therapists in there in this 8,000 square foot ballroom. And, uh, um, and I invite all these special guests. And, and actually, James Wozlowski came up with a fantastic idea a couple of years ago. Uh, I think Till was there that year. And I think Eric Stevenson was there, but I don't think he didn't instruct, help co-instructed till next, the following year. But uh, we, uh, Wozlowski said, you know, why don't we uh, have all these educators? We had uh, all the people that you mentioned, plus Art Riggs and Sue Hitzman there. So they all wanted to kind of show what they were doing, and I wanted to see what they were doing. So when we finished our second day, which was Saturday with three-day workshop, we broke into groups out in the ballroom, and each instructor, people could just wander around and uh and go to different tables and ask questions with while they did demos on people so that was uh, thrilling for me to get them involved and then i always ha uh, have a special guest educator come and they're the ones that actually do a presentation in the afternoon on um, on saturday and this year i mean was supposed to be whitney Lowe. he's going to be doing it next fourth of july of course we've all known whitney forever and we love whitney and uh, till did it a couple of years ago was a special guest educator eric stevenson was a special guest educator and uh Waslowski. so you know it's a great event and i love it oh that's fabulous what an incredible experience for a student to yeah. come to that to like that's yeah. such a rare rare opportunity to have that many um instructors there that are you know yeah. world class you and know, work, right. right and they're working work the right. tables they're right there with you working the tables you know and then when they're teaching i get to work the tables and that's what i really like best teaching assistants they you know they're i just i figured out after all these years that that's really the great job is being a teaching assistant because you're out there actually working with the people and you get to know them you know so many people i don't really get to know and then i have to have one of my teaching assistants tell me well that was this person and then oh yeah okay yeah yeah but uh, yeah i like that i like working with the with the people ah uh, that's so fabulous so if you had your sort of ideal student uh the person coming in to your class what would that person sort of um what would they, what would you like to see in your student when they're coming into your class? God, I get such a great group of students. It's unbelievable. I hardly have anybody that I don't appreciate and like, you know, I, when I was in the music business, I was also the manager of the band and I, and we put on a lot of our own um, events. Uh, and I booked them. I booked, I was a booking agent. So I booked all of the events all over the, the world really. And, um, and so when we have our events, we do the same thing. We try to make it an event, you know, and uh, um, so, you know, I just, uh, I think my ideal student would probably be just a very passionate person. You know, I was real shy, so I have to really be careful because some of the people in the back that aren't saying much are the people that, that have a lot to say. And so I really tried to pay attention to that due to my own shyness and my inexperience and going to workshops and, and being feeling uh so we don't let that happen in our workshops we do not let that happen it's very loose and we let everybody it's mainly about fun you know you learn things more novel stimuli the brain is much more receptive when it's having fun when you apply it and it's having fun because they're only going to learn a small percentage of what you teach i always say if you come home with three fantastic uh ideas techniques critical thinking concepts from a workshop then and that you use for the rest of your life then that workshop was a success and so to try to learn everything is ridiculous anyway so the whole idea is to make it fun enjoy yourself as a teacher and uh and just uh and i think uh, everybody learns a lot better that way fabulous so that really 
and that's what I've noticed about any of the classes that I've attended at the conferences with you teaching and, you know, a lot of the other um, instructors that we talked about is just that creation of space that's fun, that, that allows people to be there, that allows people to be there in whatever capacity they're at. Um, and the people that come in with those great big open minds and open hearts and just are so ready and so eager. And as participants, when you have an instructor that creates that space where we get to interact with each other and we get to interact with the presenters and the teaching assistants, it does create an, a, a, a resonance and it allows us to really absorb so much. And then, you know, a client comes in like even three months later or something and you're, you know, like thinking, how do I do this? Oh, now I remember. And then you all of a sudden just start to integrate this technique that you learned that you didn't even necessarily know that you picked up on until here's this client that now you get to use this new skill on. Exactly. Yep, I call it critter brain to critter brain. Actually, that's not my term, I wish it were. It was uh, <laughs> Diane, uh, it's Diane's last name, can't even think of her, um, pain management gal. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, uh, your, your, your limbic system, limbic system, you know, it's storing all that stuff. It doesn't miss anything at those workshops, but your prefrontal cortex is just uh, filtering what it, it thinks it needs, you know, but, um, but when you're, you know, you, sometimes you'll be doing a session on somebody and uh, uh, with somebody and, and you'll kind of daze out. You'll be, you'll kind of phase out of the, of the session, you know, you're kind of in a zone. Sometimes my eyes are closed even, you know, and, and all of a sudden I'll just kind of, I'll hear them go, oh yeah, that's, oh yeah, yeah, right there, you know, and that's critter brain to critter brain. I mean, we're, uh, we're uh, communicating and I'm doing what the limbic system tells me to do. And I really trust those times when, when I have those in, insights, intuitions, you've got to honor your intuitions because in, intuition and intent are very, very important in, in therapy be, because that's the limbic system telling you, hey, listen, listen to this. This is important. If you don't, then it'll, it'll start filtering it, it down and it won't, uh, it won't keep flashing that knowledge. I mean, that's the same with life. I mean, how you make every decision you make changes your life. And they're flying by all the time, these, these ideas, these different concepts and different things that you may want to do with your life. And you've just got to be aware and present enough to know them, grab them as they come by, right? I love that. That's such a great reminder of being present, like really being present in that room, that once you enter that room, nothing else exists. And being right. there, and the difference in outcomes, I really believe just the difference in an outcome can be so much greater if we are really present with our client. Yeah, by uh, that the biopsychosocial model that, that has been brought in recently with all of the new uh, research and neuroplasticity and things like that has just been robust for the industry. Um, I call it, that's why I call. Um, myoskeletal alignment techniques, brain-based body work, because now we know the tissue injury doesn't necessarily equate with, or doesn't equate at all really, with, uh, uh, with the amount of pain that a, a, a client or patient would have, uh, because the brain is always deciphered. We thought it just went through a couple of channels, but it turns out with functional MRI, you see all this blood lighting up throughout the brain. The brain's going, okay, what's my past experience with this? I mean, uh, is, is this important enough to, to, to filter down? Or is there a descending modulation that, 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 that stops that information uh, from coming? So, um, you know, one thing I think about that, that I... Um, that I think it's important for therapists to, to get back to. I think we're getting away from it. And one thing that, I'm, that, that sort of bothers me in the industry that I see right now is that there's not enough emphasis on being a good body worker. There's not enough, there's a lot, there's sometimes way too much emphasis on being a, um, you know, a theorist, you know, uh, and I really think we got to get back to really using our hands because the, you know, when a client comes in, they're the most important person in the world. You listen, listen, listen. That's the whole thing. You know, that's the, uh, you know, to me coming from a psychology background originally, you know, I, I love that anyway. I chat them up. We, how's your family? Da, 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 da. I work on their whole family and all this stuff. And, uh, so, uh, 
they got to know that when they're there, they're safe. And that this is the place that you're going to work together and you're going to get the problems fixed. And I think one of the things that gives people, particularly new therapists coming into the industry, uh, the most, the best results, the best therapeutic outcome is being able to use your hands, your body, your hands, the different, the, the different techniques that, that uh, you use. Like Ida Raw, for instance, it was, uh, she developed the 10 sessions and, and has been, it has been said, and I never heard her say, but it's been said that um, she developed, part of the reason she developed the 10 sessions to keep people from working on the same things every session. So, you know, you session one, you open up the, the breathing, getting some breathing, because you realize that if you don't get the breathing apparatus working, none of the sessions are going to, the rest of the session isn't going to take that well anyway. And then you go down, you start, you know, integrating the feet, legs, but basically you're every session, you have different goals, di different things you have to do. Then when you go back for advanced Rolf training, that's all kind of out the window. You, 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 you enter from then, you kind of already know your entry points. And one of the things I loved about the Rolf Institute, I know there was a bunch of trouble with the fascia because it really didn't turn out to be everything we all hoped it would be. But, um, but those people that came out of the Rolf Institute, all the early Rolfers and uh, the, I don't know how, how it is today, but I'm sure they're very good. There's really a big emphasis on how good you are with your hands to, the best therapeutic outcome is when the people within one minute, they know how you're going to, within five minutes, they know how you're going to be, you know, whether you're, you know, you know what you're doing, whether you've got that intuitive feel, whether you've got all this, this technique and implicit memory and all that stuff. And uh, that's where you get the best results. Because if you feel confident and you're, you know, you're talking and you got your, you know, this rhythm going inside you. And a lot of that just comes from, from, you know, like Malcolm Gladwell said, 10,000 times to become an expert at anything. Turned out that wasn't exactly true because if you add emotion in, it doesn't take 10,000 times to become great at, at something. But that's when it goes from explicit memory to implicit where the body knows better than the brain. You just do it. And so that that's only comes with experience. But in our workshops, we really want to stress that these people are better with their hands. They're better with their bodies by the end of day three. Wow, that's fantastic. That's um, was one of the questions that I was going to ask you is, you know, what do you think that our greatest challenges are and what do you think our greatest opportunities are in the profession and um, I think you've covered a lot of that but again I, I, I love that you you know we, we get very technical like we can get very technical I know when I finished massage school I came out and I was very technical based and so my clients were in different parts you know and then I just you know, after about six months, I'm like, I don't know if this profession is for me. And then I took Lomi Lomi. I took a weekend course in Lomi Lomi, and that's so rhythmic and incorporates all, yeah, you know, yeah. the entire body. And that was such a gift to me in being able to integrate everything I knew technically with more rhythm and more of the way that I like to practice. And this is what's great about this profession, too. We can all go to school and take the same courses. We can all come to your class and take you know the same instruction but we all take different pieces of it away and then that's that art and that science and that who we are and what we bring to the table for our clients uh, you know that that's very very good point all those were really good points but you know what i love is um is what you were saying about other you know you have a, other instructors maybe teaching the same damn techniques been around forever or something like that but you learn it in a different way they explain it in a different way and then you as robert heinlein would say would say you grok it all of a sudden it's just like you're talking about lomi lomi all of a sudden you grok it you get you you're, you're having a, a, a just an enlightened experience with it and when that happens you know, you're so hooked into to body work. There's no, I mean, there's no better profession than body work. What, what, what other profession is better than body work? You, you know, you can go anywhere except for family reunions, right? You hate <laughs> body work at family reunions. Oh, I got this. <laughs> you make you, you. you know, but uh, aside from that, uh, you know, you can take your tools with you anywhere. I mean, when I first had that experience with my, my uh, I had never had 
body work at all. I was, uh, you know, I don't know how old I was, but, but when, you know, and I, but, well, I had had just when that chronic pain and then I had that uh, some session from chiropractors and physical therapists in, in Los Angeles. But when I was at San Diego Health Institute and I went to see this rolfer and he started doing this stuff, it was totally different. I mean, you know, I love, I'm not putting physical therapy down. I'm definitely not putting chiropractic down or anything like that. All I'm saying is when it's third party pay, you have time constraints. When somebody else is paying for it, you have time constraints. So what's great about what we do is we have, well, you know, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, whatever your session time is, uh, to work with the person. That gets that social bonding, you know, that you get the oxytocin going, you know, all of the, the, the dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin and endorphins, all of those are in, involved in, in body work. That's one of the things that gives us our greatest therapeutic uh, outcomes is, is stimulating these, uh, these hormones in, in people. And, and it all comes with being able to have your hands on somebody for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half compared to 15 minutes, five rooms going, okay, you know, I've got three to five minutes to have my hands on this person. Then I got to get in the next room and, and do my thing with them. It just didn't fly with me and never liked it. And so that's the best thing about um, um, our profession is because we get to know people. It's socially interactive for both of us. And so it really helps our um, biopsychosocial system. And, uh, you know, we've really got to appreciate what we got and all this crisis that's going on. Come on. You know, there's so many good things coming out of this crisis. You know, when the, well, I follow a bunch of groups, an anti-aging group out in, in a, a, a lab out in San Diego and one in Russia. And they are just getting so much more funding now because people are looking at the big picture. Wait a minute. Uh, will we ever find a cure for cancer, heart disease, all this stuff? Or why are we looking at the wrong thing? Why, why, do, why are people dying? They're dying because they're aging. And so the, I, I'm real interested in that. But also this COVID thing has caused, a, and one of the pieces of that anti-aging thing was the immune system, trying to figure that damn thing out because it goes all the way back to that gut bacteria stuff and all that stuff, primarily all that inflammation and all the crap that's being caused. And so, you know, that's got to, uh, that, that's, this COVID thing's going to really help um, the research in, in immunology, in immunotherapy, immuno, however you say that, immunotherapy. And, uh, and also, you know, we've been through crises before. I've been through a lot of crises, uh, uh, you know, going through the Vietnam War and stuff like that. I thought the world was coming to an end. Through that time, I was out in California playing music and, the, you know, the riots, every, every concert we played, there were, there were riots. And... Uh, and so, uh, you know, then we had the Murrah bombing here in Oklahoma City, and I was standing there getting ready to do a, a client, actually getting uh, prepared, and the whole house started shaking, you know. And, and I thought nothing would, I thought the, the, the Oklahoma City would never be the same. I thought that would affect my practice, and I would never be the same. You know what? We just keep going. And why we keep going is because people need touch therapy. There's nothing better than touch therapy. <laughs> nothing better than when you put their, your hands on somebody. You know, their brain waves immediately lower from beta to alpha, sometimes to delta, you know. I mean, it changes them. Every time you put your hands on a person, it changes the brain. And uh, so we'll get through this and it's going to be a lot better It'll, it will all come back as long as the teaching institutions really focus on giving people a lot of hands-on work a lot of blue collar in the trenches how do how does my touch feel do i have really really good hands am i able to use my body well that's the whole key like we were talking about a while ago about the rhythm yes and your point about do I use my body well? That's that longevity piece for us as practitioners. And yeah. I, I totally agree with you that we, I think, again, where our greatest opportunities lie is in the amount of time that we do get to spend with our clients. It's such a rare, precious gift that we have in our profession. And the other piece is that there isn't anyone on the planet who can't benefit from healthy touch, from massage. So infants, you know, day one, all the way to palliative care when we're leaving. So as we're arriving and as we're leaving, 
and everywhere in between and every person, whether you're really healthy, whether you're an athlete, whether you have chronic illnesses, uh, whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you're bedridden, there is every opportunity for us to touch, literally touch people's lives in so many amazing ways to bring, you know, relief, to bring health and wellness, to bring joy, um, yeah, to, to bring peace of mind. Well said. <laughs> I wish I had that on tape. <laughs> you can steal it, Eric. We do have it on tape. <laughs> Oh, that, was, that was very good, Melanie. Why did you even ask me the question? Why don't you just uh, answer it? Much, much more concise. You know, I tend to ramble. Uh, yeah, but in, the, in, in our expressiveness, there's always nuggets, right? There's always nuggets in there. So, Eric, just um, tell me a little bit more about the, um, your technique. And because you're using, like you're talking about the brain, and the body together. And I love in my Facebook feed, because of course, I'm so I have so many massage therapists in my Facebook feed, um, people holding up their certificates of completion from, you know, from your classes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we started uh, dreaming of that uh, master bioskeletal therapist certification about 10 years ago. And uh, we put together a 210 hour program, which consists of uh, I think it's 10 e-learning or, or home study. You can do it either with the books and videos or with uh, uh, or online. And uh, 50 hours of live training with me or some of my teachers. Aubrey Gowing's teaching a, a bunch. Uh, he and Till, matter of fact, are teaching a workshop coming up pretty soon, I think, in... Uh, um, I don't know if it's in Australia. Just I'm not, I'm not positive where it is, so I don't want to say. But um, but I've gotten I think eight or nine new teachers that are teaching for me this year, and and uh, we and so any of the 50 hours that is required for our master myoskeletal therapist certification can be taken uh, from uh, the uh, uh, the teachers that are out there all over the world teaching. Or I like for them to come to the Costa Rica retreat, that seven-day retreat, because it's really an intense learning and loving, ex compassionate experience over there. Uh, but yeah, Master Miles Skeletal Therapist, we're really happy with that. Uh, weekly, we have a Technique Tuesday newsletter that goes out, and I always have a video and a, um, a Technique video, something that, that, we're, that we're working on frozen shoulder, uh, sciatica, stuff like that. And it, it comes along with a blog. So the blog talks about, you know, the, the theory and critical uh, thinking aspects and then the technique or how some of the approaches that I use to, uh, to deal with those problems. So we have that. And then I've got a couple of new projects coming out. I got a, um, within the next few weeks, it's, um, it's called Dalton's Technique Treasures, and it's a, a, a bunch of articles that I've written over the years that we've kind of revised a little bit and with accompanying videos. And it's going to be a really, really fun course. It's going to be a good course. I'm looking forward to that to come out. And I'm doing something with Eric Brown and Ann Williams that uh, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but. You know, we've always got stuff going, you know, we're always, it seems like I'm busier than ever. <laughs> How does that happen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That no happen? retirement. That's the new retirement. That's happened. I don't know. That's the new retirement. Actually, that's funny. I was going to ask you, what have you got brewing? And if you have any, you know, top secret things coming up that you can, yep. you know, share. So that was great. Thank you. Um, yep. I, I would like to just before we go, um, hear a little bit about Costa Rica and how that came about and and like how do we get to costa rica to um to your classes and then of course um we want to get everybody on your email list because i love the nuggets that come out and i love the videos that you're sharing too thank you uh, costa rica i got a phone call in 2002 or maybe it was late 2001 from a gal in Los Angeles, and she'd been reading a couple of my articles, and she said she had this resort in, in uh, the mountains overlooking San Jose, and they, it was a yoga re retreat, big time yoga retreat. Huge. I don't know how many acres that thing is, but there's a whole bunch of different buildings and everything, and it's just gorgeous, drop dead, and beautiful. And uh, and she said that she thought that they could have uh, you know manual therapy could work over there. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know if I could get anybody over there at all. So the first year, 
my wife went, my, my daughter who's in, uh, uh, was in medical school at the time and her um, fiance was also in for medical school at the same time, all went over and we ended up having like 30 people. We couldn't believe it. So that was in 2002. And the first person that I shook hands with over there, the manager of the resort, Vidya, um, was, um, ended up building my house in Costa Rica and I've had a house there. We bought the property in 2007. And so Terry and I, uh, my wife and I spend, uh, you know, two, three months uh, a year there. And uh, so Costa Rica has become very fond of me and that workshop, like I say, that retreat is really spectacular because you have learning and then you have a lot of uh, travel to, to different uh, um, the volcanoes, the beach, the whitewater rafting, uh, all, all kinds of stuff that they, they're very well organized. Take you in groups wherever you want. And the best thing about the learning there, the two, two best things about the learning. First of all, the room that we teach in is always open. And so people, when we're not having classes, if they don't go on excursions, they're in there working. And I'll go in there and just lay around on a table sometime and watch people work and pick up stuff. And uh, so that adds to the learning experience because you learn from somebody other than just hearing me all the time. And then Aubrey Gowing, who is uh, going, I always call him Gowing, Aubrey Going, is um, a fabulous instructor. And he's been teaching the last two years there, uh, uh, a day, almost a full day there. And so it's been great uh, in that respect. And then when people go on the excursions, they're always talking to the shop. So, you know, it's they're, they're, you're picking up stuff the whole time because you're in encased in a little whatever 10 acre or a little community there and uh, nobody's in there we don't allow anybody to, to any other workshops to be there while we're there so we have we put we can mac, put maximum 65 people in that room so we put 65 people in i have my next one coming up uh this november it's always the week following thanksgiving ericdalton.com uh and it'll have a workshop page and you can uh, sign up for that it's a uh, it's a blast Fabulous. That would be incredible just to be in that, you know, talk about a great bubble to be in. That would be an amazing <laughs> bubble to be in. Um, is there anything else that you want to share before we go, Eric? Um, keep the faith, people. That's all I can say. <laughs> this is, I know this is, a, we, we ought to just take 2020 and just put a big X to it. But, you know, there are a lot of things that are coming out of this, like I said. And so we, we you know, we're going to all pull out of this and it's all going to be greater. And a lot of the, the uh, therapists that really had the passion that didn't get into it just because they went to a Votech school and it said, do you want to be an auto mechanic or a massage? Well, I think massage would be good rather than the, the, some of those people may not be back in the industry and that's okay. Uh, the people who have the passion, the people that are eager to learn, they're going to be back in the, and they're going to be wanting to get better and better. This is a great time to get better and better, by the way. So you need to get on, get, take a couple of my learning courses at this time, because I'm, a, I'm learning at this time, too. While we're off, this is a great opportunity to, uh, to do some practice, to keep your skills up. So when you have opened, I'm back to practicing now. Uh, but when you guys get open and you feel safe to open, then uh, um, you'll be sharp. So I love you guys. That's all I can say. And love you uh, too, Melanie. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. And it's just been, um, it's been a pleasure to hang out with you for so many years and to learn from you and to just, and to stay connected with you. So that's been really fabulous. And um, for everyone here, please hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and pop into the um, Massage Therapy Radio Facebook page. Give that a like. And please share this video with your friends and your colleagues who you think might enjoy it. So thanks for tuning in and thank you so much, Eric. Thank you.